Hey everyone, welcome back to Mr. Bennett. We're going to do a quick section on covalent bonding. And up until this point, we've only formed bonds between metals, so elements on the left side of the periodic table, and non-metals, so elements on the right side of the periodic table. Uh, metals are things like sodium, potassium, lithium, then there's the transition metals, and the non-metals are, you know, the, the gases that we use a lot in our bonding. And we've these create cations and anions. And so what well, the problem comes in when we have two nonmetals that need to form a bond. There are a lot of compounds that form between two nonmetal atoms, uh, like oxygen is an O2 molecule. There's two nonmetals there. They can't become ions uh, because both of those ions want to be negative. They want to be anions. You cannot have two negative atoms bonded together using ionic bonding. So there's a different method we have to use. So we're going to look at ionic versus covalent bonding. Um, when we're doing ionic bonding, so we're going to take a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. We're going to compare them. And I'm going to use blue for my sodium one valence electron, and chlorine is going to have seven red valence electrons. And I go around the clock like this. I say, so imagine a box. Uh, you could put uh, a dot on each side, and then we start pairing up. So chlorine's got four, five, six seven valence electrons around its outside. And in ionic bonding, sodium is going to donate its one valence electron to a chlorine into one of this, this, this empty spot right here, right? And we get a sodium plus one ion. It has no more electrons. And a chlorine that now, if you draw your valence, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of its own, plus sodium's one valence electron and now this chlorine has a negative one charge and because of the positive and negative they stick together so in an ionic bond this is an actual donate that donates or it gives electrons E negative uh, so the sodium transfers its valence electron to the chlorine and now your positives and negatives hold it together covalence a little bit different so we're gonna have a chlorine two chlorine atoms and they need to bond uh, so the chlorine on the left is gonna have seven valence so we do one two three four five, six, and seven in blue, and then we'll do the other chlorine in red, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and when these come together, I can't donate my electron. I have to actually overlap the valence shell. So when they form the bond, covalent, right, they're cooperating or they're combining the valence electron. This chlorine's got two, they really just come closer together so that the shared pair rests between them. So now each chlorine atom has eight valence electrons and there's a shared pair of electrons right here, right in the middle. So we do this by looking at the, the single electron left over in the valence shell. So this is a share, oops, shared, wow, I cannot spell today. It's a shared electron pair in between them. And the goal is to fill both valence shells forming an octet, right? The octet is that set of eight valence electrons. It wants to be full in covalent bonding. They share a pair of electrons right here in the middle. So this chlorine has got two, four, six, eight around it on the left and two, four, six, eight around the chlorine on the right. And the other example uses like when you pass a pencil back and forth in class, um, you are equally using that pencil. You're sharing it between you two, each benefiting from it. Covalent bonds are always between two nonmetals. So make sure that we are keeping our atoms straight. If you have a metal nonmetal, it's going to be an ionic bond. Um, and then nonmetals, nonmetals are going to form covalent. Because these atoms don't become ions, we have to have different rules for naming. And so to start with, I don't know how many atoms I have. With ionic bonds, I know how many atoms there are because I have to balance out my charges, right? All elements get a prefix in covalent bonding. So if I have a single atom, we put a mono in front of it. So like carbon monoxide, there's one oxygen there. A two gets a di, so carbon dioxide. We know some of these already. Three is tri, four is tetra, not quad, tetra. Five is penta, six is hexa, seven hepta, H-E-P-T-A, eight is octa, nine is nona, 
and 10 is deca. So they follow your geometry, your shapes. So there's like a tetragon, a pentagon, a hexagon, a decagon. So, it, you know, it just tells me how many atoms there are. We'll do an example in a moment. The last element in the compound gets an ide suffix, and it's hard to remember. Well, it's not harder. You, gotta, you have to remember. Do not confuse these with anions from ionic compounds, right? So the naming we've done so far, we've looked at anions, like a chlorine here becomes a chloride ion. Uh, we use the same ending in our compounds, but they're not ionic because we have this prefix. And I don't, there's no charges. There are no charges to balance out. So don't confuse yourself. When you're looking at examples, carbon tetrachloride, there's a name here. You can drop the mono if it's the first element. So this is a single carbon. Tetra means four and chloride, right? That ID comes from chlorine. So your formula is CCL4. So you can work your way down this list. And on the other side, you're doing the same thing. So here with the formula, I have a CF4. So again, this would be monocarbon, but because this first, I can drop the mono. So this is carbon. Four fluorines becomes tetra fluoride. Okay, very similar to tetrachloride. Fluorine is right above chlorine, so they work similarly. You can do the same. You can work your way down this list. Down here, you've got the formula. I want the name, or you can give me the opposite. Um, we're going to start with our nitrogen in the middle. Nitrogen on the periodic table is in column number five, so it has five valence. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Please use that pairing pattern. And three hydrogens. So we're going to do hydrogen in red. So hydrogen with its single valence electron. Singles line up. So single electrons pair up with other single electrons to form your bonds. So you have a shared pair. So nitrogen now has eight valence electrons and each hydrogen has two. So remember hydrogen is in shell number one. So it's full valence shell is two. So that's covalent bonding in a nutshell. If you're in class and you have questions, you can always ask me in class or leave me a comment below and I will be sure to answer it as quickly as I can.